Welcome, strangers, to Talkumentary, a show where we watch documentaries and then get together and talk about them. I'm blinded by that hot you hot and flies. Accoutrement? What is that? Come on, will you do me a kindness? I don't want any more bullshit anytime during the day from anyone. And that includes another episode of Talkumentary. Welcome back, everyone. My name's Jeff, and this is Talkumentary episode number nine. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. Tonight we are in the documentary den with King James. What's up? What's up? What's up? Good golly, Miss Molly. Hey. And Bryce. Good evening. Good evening. We have uh, this 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 evening cursed our way down here, slammed the door on the way in, and loved every second of it. Because this week we watched a very angry and overheated 85-minute documentary called Winnebago, 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 Man. Winnebago Man. Winnebago Man. All right, here we go. The Winnebago Concepts and Engineering Departments have developed a multifunctional bathroom. Privacy, I don't know what the f*** I'm reading. I'm slate this f***. You big dumb son of a- I love this clip. I watch it like every time I'm in a bad mood. Oh, I've seen this like hundreds of times. This guy's a legend. Jack Rebney would be the holy grail of stars to meet from these videos. We could never find him, so we just assumed he was gone. You believe any of that? Get out of here, you f-ing flies. This was a 2009 documentary that follows a filmmaker as he searches for finds, and connects with the star of one of the first viral outtake videos, Mr. Jack Rebney. He became an internet phenomenon when the videos of him losing his ever-loving shit in frustration during a sales promotion for Winnebago RVs. This was a fun one, guys. It was fun. It was definitely a little bit different from the last couple that we did, but uh, fun and funny. Winnebago Man has won several awards. Believe it or not, Grand Jury Award for Best Documentary at the Sarasota Film Festival in 2009, the Grand Jury Award at the Edmonton International Film Festival in 2009, Audience Award at Cinevegas International Film Festival in 2009, and the Austin Film Award at Austin Film Critics Association in 2010. We got some pretty awesome reviews. Some of these are pretty funny. This one is from The Stranger, which is uh, fitting, saying, Quote, Rebney is fascinating and clever and magnetic and vulnerable and relentlessly hilarious. His careful, erudite, baso speech forever developing into volleys of fuck, 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 fucks. (laughs) Winnebago Man is about an old man and a new world meeting halfway, which I think is a pretty good one. Winnebago Man is certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes with a 90% tomato meter, 62 reviews, and an audience score of 80 percent with over 10,000 ratings directed by and starring Ben Steinbauer produced by Joel Heller Malcolm Pullinger and Ben Steinbauer this film was a production by The Bear and Field Guide Media distributed by Kino International and we st- we streamed it on Tubi Tubi to be or to not to be to be to be for sure because it's free <laughs> right right yeah. yeah yeah this is not an advertisement for to be yeah well, I, d- to I can't endorse be. it but i have watched one documentary from it <laughs> right right and that documentary is was, this one is this yeah. one mm-hmm. yeah so far it's called mm-hmm. the winnebago man the winnebago man no just winnebago oh man. just winnebago no, man. The. there's no the All right, so a quick warning before we get into this episode. If you haven't seen this documentary yet, go to Tubi and check it out before you listen. This is your one and only spoiler alert. So, Tony, do me a kindness and go watch this first. Nothing? All right. That's a a good reference to a documentary they might have not watched. They might not have seen yet. Uh, There's a lot of cussing in it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about why we chose to watch Winnebago Man. Um, Bryce... Whether you knew it or not, you were the dealer for this one. So ah. tell us why you chose this, Doc. Good job, Price. Well, um, I chose this one uh, because I didn't know I was choosing it. Mm-hmm. And also because it's a guy selling Winnebago's. Mm-hmm. And that is just the most luxurious trailer camper you can have. Yeah. 
So you did would you, know Bryce because you lived out of your van, you know. When they were when talking, about go ahead and tell the world up. his his uh, his sleeping arrangements. Well. Uh, I I live indoors now. But, yes, yeah. Uh, Good for you, more man. than van doors, but um, yeah. When they were talking about how many post office boxes he has, mm-hmm. uh, that made sense to me because it's like, oh yeah, he's just been living around. Yeah, it's great. Um, what were your Molly? What were your expectations or your predictions before you had seen it? Had you seen this before we did it for our show? No, I think I'm the youngest out of the documentary crew. So Mm -hmm. this was not within my realm of memes or viral videos growing up, unfortunately. But the couple of viral videos that they did have in there, I was familiar with. I was very happy about it. I had Mm -hmm. never seen... James was looking at me like I'm crazy calling myself the youngest here, but... (laughs) Well, you are the youngest one here, you know, so... But yeah, this is a little bit before my time, so I was interested to see the. Oh, and vibe. you're the only female here too. I am right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. It was interesting to see viral videos. Um, before there was internet. Before there was internet, yeah, yeah like spreading it through VHS. Like I had VHS tapes as a kid, but yeah. like I had like the Lion King and stuff on it to like put me to sleep when I was like six. Like yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't sharing them, and mm-hmm. yeah. So the original viral videos were. Uh, copied VHS tapes mm-hmm. and passed from one person to the next, and then they they left. You know, there they lost a little bit of their quality as they went, and so just added more charm. Yeah, right. Although I never, I don't recall ever doing that where we like found something funny and then you know copied it and mo- and sent it on to our friends or anything. I know there was some times where we would give movies and and things but you know you record it off of the tv and then uh you know write on it and then you cross it out and put it in your camcorder and uh record things like that so anyway i thought that was pretty funny i expected you know i hadn't seen this before before we covered it for this show uh, i expected it to be fairly lighthearted. i expected it to be full of angry outbursts um you know that it was yeah one of the i actually and maybe it was just the mood that i was in or something when i watched it but it actually wasn't quite as funny as i thought it was going to be um you know one of the things this was touted as being one of the funniest documentaries ever made was the the tagline and although it did have funny parts most of the funny parts were from the original mm-hmm. uh outburst videos not from the documentary itself and I feel like that was where the humor came in. The the most of the documentary itself was um, actually pretty heartfelt, I mm-hmm. guess, in some ways, and sad in other ways. Right. And at least that was the the feeling I got from it. Yeah, same here. Yeah, same here. I think that when they uh, when they first made this documentary, it was funny then, mm-hmm. more funnier then than now. But now. So, so cyberbullying and everything has yeah. become more mm-hmm. popular that was able to move forward. I guess back in the day, they were a little bit more discreet. All right. So let's get into a quick and dirty synopsis of the doc before we get into some of our standout moments. This film starts with director Ben Steinbauer, who ended up being kind of one of the characters in the film, not just the uh, filmmaker. He was the... I mean, he was basically one of the two main characters in the film. It was his relationship with Jack Rebney. But Ben Steinbauer was obsessed with this hilarious set of outtakes um, from an RV commercial shoot centering on outrageous and frustrated outbursts of the spokesperson for Winnebago, who at the time was Jack Rebney. The video started circulating before the internet boom, and as we were saying earlier, the physical VHS tapes were being passed around and copied. Steinbauer, being a filmmaker, decides he wants to try to find Jack Rebney and let the world meet him decades after the release of the outtakes, uh, but Rebney proved difficult to find, even with the help of a PI that he hired. Eventually, he tracks him down. Uh, Winnebago man, The infamous Winnebago man was in a remote mountain area in California, Uh, where he served as the caretaker for a little fishing lake. At this point, he is a self-proclaimed hermit who enjoys being alone. And to Steinbauer's surprise, Rebney is nothing like he was portrayed in his videos. 
Instead, he was calm. He was well-spoken. He, uh, he didn't seem to be bothered at all by the attention that he was getting from his outtake videos. He actually seemed to find them somewhat humorous. And sort of disappointed, Steinbauer goes home after a little bit of spending a little time with him. However, <laughs> Bryce, what did we find mm -hmm. out shortly after that? Uh, just imagine going all the way out there to meet this guy, and he's just the sweetest old man. He looks like he <laughs> meditates watching, for fun. Yeah, yeah. Kumbaya, yeah. Lord, just, you know. he's he's out there living off the grid in a seventy six year old cabin. Uh, it's a nice just, cabin. Too. It is a nice cabin. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty sweet setup, honestly. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you go out there, you film this. He's just the sweetest guy after for years and years watching these outtakes of him just losing his shit, you know? Yep. Um, and then you go home and you're like, okay, we've got this video. I don't have a documentary to produce. Oh, yeah. you, this sucks. You upload it so people yep. know what's going on. At it, best, you've got a YouTube video that shows, hey, the guy that used to be mad is now calm and serene. Yep. Yeah, At right. best, yeah. And then later you get a call. You, <laughs> you get, get a call, a call. from him. Yep. And he's just shooting the shit with you. And you're like, yeah, all right. He's a good friend now. That's cool. Yeah. And then he calls you up and says, uh, I was just pretending Mm -hmm. that's not really how I feel about this. <laughs> yep. And then yeah. you got to go back out there and get the real story. Yeah. So, so he gets this call from Rebney or several calls from, from Jack that basically said, I was simply acting calm and unbothered. And in reality, I've been angry for years about this whole thing. And part of the reason I'm out here in seclusion is because I'm just mad at everybody and I got things I want to say and I want people to hear it. And he basically Steinbauer decides to go meet the real Jack Rebney, and it was a it was a serious turning point when he went back the second time. You could tell that he was being himself because everything that was said to him had some kind of a smart ass. That man is living out of spite. Yeah, right. out yeah, of he was an, alone. an angry mm -hmm. dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, well, angry, but also just so cynical. So yeah, and so blunt, yeah, like just yeah. straight forward. Yeah. yeah. Right. Very direct. Right. <laughs> Very direct. Uh, yep, you which don't was, like it? Yeah. You can get on, get <laughs> stuff, and just go. Yep, pack <laughs> up on. and go. <laughs> yeah, you said, man. Yeah, go ahead yep. on. This is much closer to the to the character that was displayed in those original Winnebago commercials, uh, which sort of, I think, to the delight of Steinbauer, he was meeting the real Jack Rebney. Right. Um, despite... His attempts to get Jack to open up and be vulnerable and talk about personal things that that Jack's fans maybe would enjoy. Um, Jack said, I got stuff I want to say, but he was a little bit, he had a hard time telling him what exactly it was he wanted to say, besides that he thinks Dick Cheney is a dick. <laughs> uh, that <laughs> was really pokers. the only thing. Say what? Something about hot pokers up the rear end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would make his day. <laughs> yep. So eventually, with the help of Jack's uh, longtime friend, Keith, Keith, uh, they get Jack to go to the Found Footage Festival in San Francisco, where Jack has a chance to meet a bunch of his fans who he initially assumed were just going to be a bunch of idiots. But there was a little heartfelt moment in this when Jack realizes that his fans are maybe not the young idiots that he thought they were. And he starts to feel like maybe I do have a little bit of, um, they do have a little bit of humanity and maybe they're not just making fun of me. It's more of a fandom thing. Uh, and he eventually admits that his fans are more intelligent than he anticipated and seems to take a little bit of pride actually in some of the, I guess being what the way he said it was being the representation of the human condition in the face of adversity. So, Bryce, let's start with you, man. That was sort of the the short run. Now, what things about Winnebago Man stood out? Good, bad, ugly, or otherwise? Um, I I think it was good. Uh, a lot of good things came out of it. Um, first because it talked about these videos that first went viral. I mean, YouTube and the internet craze of viral videos had just begun. Otherwise, it was, you know, have you seen Lord of the Rings? <laughs> yes, it was amazing. Um, 
but then it turns into, have you seen this video of this old man mm -hmm. swearing at this Winnebago? Right. Um, so it takes us back in time a little bit, um, to kind of yeah. where it all began there. Um, I think, I think the, uh, director had a hard time telling the story he wanted to see out of this. Yeah. Because Jack's an old man and, uh, it seemed like he, the things he wanted to say to say his piece were, uh, maybe just a politically charged yeah. old man ramblings and right, that didn't right. make the, uh, just a grumpy old guy. it didn't make the cut of the documentary. Right. Nor, nor would it have appealed to the fans. I mean, it has right. nothing to do with the original content, right? which I think was where the two, the director and Jack were most at odds is Jack's going, well, this is the story I want to tell, which is just let's bitch about the government and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. you know, Steinbauer's going, but that's not who you are. Like right. you already have a fan base. Let's let's work on that. Yeah. People and, aren't his fans because of his intellect and his opinions on things, which is right. unfortunate. But he was famous for getting yeah. angry. So yep. let's <laughs> capitalize on that. Right. Yeah. James, what about you, man? What stood out to you? Uh, what what would you like? Would you not like? Well, I definitely like his dog, Booty. Aww. Buddha. <laughs> so uh, Buddha. Cute. Yep. Uh, another thing uh, stood out to me was the fact that, like he said, he wasn't afraid to say what he wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like when I kind of felt sad for him when he like lost his sight. Yeah. And was lost yeah. in the woods and stuff, yeah. and he he just came right out and just said exactly what happened with not no sugarcoating or anything. You know, and plus I do like the tie that he got too, but no. But uh, all in all, I mean, he's like a man that lived in his world and refused to see the new world, kind of like to me. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it was, it, he was very like hermit like mm -hmm. and being able to show him. I mean, he had his computer, but it didn't sound like he wanted much to do with it. Um, you know, so Steinbauer and, they they kind of showed him like you said the new world the modern mm -hmm. world and i think he was a little bit surprised by it i know i immediately kind of felt bad for him you know when they started at the beginning of the doc when they started talking about uh you know the star wars kid and uh, alexi vayner who made the key to success videos and just sort of how the 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 introduction to cyberbullying and the just how absolutely heartless and cruel people can be on the internet when they're behind the internet when they're behind their screen and so knowing the kind of thing they they spoke on what the Star Wars kid and uh the other guy Alexi what the sort of things that they had to to deal with post those videos there's no the original viral videos and, and still today, a lot of the ones that we see and that really go far are, are ones that are an act of humiliation for the people that are, that are in there. Those are the things that get laughed at. You know, those are the things that get attention, people falling over and all that. And then, you know, there's people who have capitalized on that by putting themselves through stupid shit just so that they get, you know, clicks but you can say jackass it's okay <laughs> yeah i mean that's i mean but i'm a fan yeah, i mean that's no, the yeah. that's the the thing is it's it's hard to not be into those but at mm -hmm. the same time when you when you look at the people that it affects i felt sad for him that was the first like if you're gonna go and i he never admitted that it was because of that mm -hmm. but it's hard to imagine that somebody you know in that you know with that sort of notoriety didn't maybe go away because of the negative attention he was getting. And and when you've got pride, it's hard mm -hmm. to sometimes hear those things. And and these guys weren't raised in the age of the internet where maybe it's a little easier to let the trolls roll off your back. But, you know, what those things maybe affect you a little bit more. It's also sad because Winnebago, like the actual company said that they mm. didn't want anything to do with the commercials or with Jack Rebney. So right. even if he liked the notoriety and the like celebrity from it, like it's not like he was going to 
be able to work with that company again or continue right. on with commercials because now you're just the Winnebago guy. Like, yeah. that's it. You're an angry So man. what else are you going to do with your life when a company has publicly said they don't want anything to do with you and that's what you're known mm -hmm. for? Yeah. Well, like the, uh, I mean, they made the, the video for Winnebago and Winnebago shot it down. So they fired Jack. And I don't know how many years of passing video cassettes around right or vhs before it got on the internet but there had to be this long pause where winnebago forgot all about probably Jack. didn't yeah, yeah. Didn't and even then remember. one day Definitely. it was a viral sensation yep. and then they were like yeah that's not lining up with what we're going for <laughs> yeah. now this is not our values please yep. don't yeah <laughs> molly I, anything stand out to you uh, about this doc that you want to? I honestly, on? I really liked Keith. I thought Keith was like my one of my favorite yeah. <laughs> parts of the doc, um, and I have like so much respect for the producer sticking with Jack because yeah. I do not have the wherewithal to stick with someone who's like berating me like that yeah. verbally. And like he was there for a reason and he wanted to get that doc done, mm -hmm. but talking him into going to the found footage festival and when they were they were in the woods talking about stuff and. Um, the producer was like, what was his name? Ben. Ben. Yeah. Ben. Because I remember him saying Steinbauer. His, yeah. And then he was like, Stein, Stein Banner, Stein Banner, Stein yeah. Burner, whatever your name is. Come <laughs> yeah. over here. Their relationship was really funny to me. And yeah. they were in the woods talking about what Jack wanted to do versus what Ben wanted to yep. do. And Ben was like trying to convince with him and stay with him yep. on these things. And like, I do, do not have like yeah. the gumption to stick with someone who talks like that and sticks mm -hmm. like that and like i think i think that yeah. there's the way i got it was that there's probably a little bit more of a uh mutual respect there mm -hmm. than maybe they showed right um because it seemed like he it was, seemed like jack liked him yeah like he, he was, called him he wanted exactly. to talk on the phone with him it makes me wonder how much of that was right was going on behind the scenes where you know you're sort of razzing someone you're a little back and forth right that's kind of like a typical guy thing to mm -hmm. do sometimes where you know uh that back and forth so especially with an older guy like jack i i'll bet you i'll bet you ben gave his fair share of of cheap shots at i him sure and, hope so and <laughs> yeah at least that's the yeah the feeling i got and i feel You're like not... with being friends with the with keith yeah. that that guy seemed so genuine and like he was great on camera and everything like you probably yeah. wouldn't have relationships he... with someone sticking out that long if yeah. he didn't have something kind to him but it just it was so hard to get through yeah the rough the, exterior, the rough exterior mm -hmm. of it yeah and like you saw him with his dog and that was so precious and heartfelt yeah. and him with his hand on ben and keith's shoulders like being yep. guided through and like yeah those kind of things just like they tear at your heartstrings a little bit yeah and and you, you wonder how much yeah. of some of the the outburst too yeah. is when the camera's around right right you and know. you always have a soft spot for like older people especially when they yeah. have like deteriorating vision and things yeah so, their health is yeah. maybe going downhill mm -hmm. um can we just talk about though that what's happening james what's happening james <laughs> who's calling who's important what else? Break a break a break phone. Summer bucking <laughs> didn't phone. God darn it. <laughs> that's all i can say about that you know hey tony <laughs> <laughs> can you get that phone for me? Would you would you do me a kindness? Would you do me a kindness? So can we talk about the fact that Keith, when he called Jack, he called him Boobsy? Yeah. Okay. And then they never like explained yeah. what oh, was Boobsy, huh? Yeah. Is that a is that a nickname that old guys call each other regularly? No, I feel like an old angry man like that would not want to be called Boobsy either. Yeah. That's probably why he does it. <laughs> probably. Um so for me, the standout moment was by far, you know, the end when he the, was on stage mm -hmm. at the festival, when he finally got up on stage. Mm -hmm. um, he killed it up there. Oh, my God. He did yeah, he so did. great. Yeah, I, got, did. I got a little bit nervous when he was up there going, is he going to just clam up? Is right. he going to start berating people? Is he going to? But only talk was about like, Dick Cheney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He and he started to go that direction. It was a tasteful little yeah. bit of Dick Cheney, yeah. and then he brought it back. <laughs> yeah, he said the only person that I maybe hate is Dick Cheney. Like, okay, that's right. funny. Yeah. It, it was almost like he was. It, it he was, was like, happy. Yeah, it was. was it happy. was a very mm -hmm. natural 
responses. They were very thoughtful and, and everything. And and the way that he interacted with his fans afterwards, mm-hmm. I mean, he wasn't wanting to – if he was, they didn't show it, but he wasn't wanting to – like leave right away. He right. wasn't he hoping took pictures, to be done. He, did autographs, he was smiling yeah. with them. He was shaking hands. He was saying nice to meet you, which wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I was almost kind of holding my breath, going, "When's he going to get tired of this?" Right. I was actually really touched that he he was feeling that, and we don't know his history. You know, we don't know his family history. When when Ben tried to talk to him about that earlier in the doc, he shut it down immediately and said, "We're not going to talk about that." Um, so we don't know what any of that is. So we don't know if he's had family, if he has kids, if he's ever had a wife or anything like that. And, uh, so in my mind, when he's there having these people go up, come up and say, you know, it's so nice to meet you. And that could be one of the, I don't want to say first times because he's obviously got friends, but one of the few times maybe in his life where he really felt adored and loved right. and, exactly. and and treasured and like he meant something to somebody. And I think that's probably why he felt so uh his his opinions changed of the people. I mean, he goes, Wait, they're not just here to give me a hard time. They're applauding me with how, you know, me being myself on stage, I thought that was uh, really cool. And it looked like he enjoyed every second of it. And, and the people were nice to him, you know. I mean, he had nobody. In the, if somebody in the state and the uh, artist would have went off like he would, then he would have been, like, vindicated, like, yeah, that's what I thought. They were a bunch of idiots. Right. Yeah. But since yeah. no one did that, they just applauded him and stuff. He was happy anyway from the yeah. beginning. I think it's through all the cursing that he does, if you read his facial expressions, he just was a lonely man. Mm-hmm. Once he realized that he was seen and people like him, like yeah. you said, that's when he well, that's, was happier. That's a long time, a lot of privacy, a long time out there in, in the woods definitely leaves you kind of stewing on things when you, when you, you know, if you've ever been sick for a long period of time at home, even then you're going, I need to get out and be around somebody and, you know, my, your spirits can start to, you know, drop and that, that loneliness can be, can be real. But I will say his, and we mentioned this a little bit before his little setup out at that lake with the cabin and the, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. that that sounds pretty nice to me. It's like all of your eyes is a dream to go out there. Although it was was my last summer. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) It's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, let's see. Did did we feel like this told a good story? Do we feel like the the Steinbauer did a good job telling the story of of Jack? I think so. I think so too. I actually really enjoyed watching this just because it wasn't a lot to follow along with. I felt like there was enough context. We got to see a lot of different sides of Jack. Like I truly felt like we hit all of the the points of yeah. pathos and like mm-hmm. everything where like we were worried that he was going to be angry and it was funny to watch him cursing and then he realized that the people who are fans of him are normal people who are yeah. getting a laugh out of seeing someone else who is frustrated and it's not out of really humiliation like it is with other viral videos because yeah. it's people who want to feel validated and yeah like i when i do something stupid i cuss at myself like sometimes i apologize to chairs when i kick them by accident <laughs> like stuff like that and so him be- getting so mad and being like god damn it i forgot my line fuck fuck yeah. fuck the fuck fucking flies like yeah everyone's kind of been there where they've just had that day oh my God. Yes. <laughs> so many times. And when they, they talked about how hot it was out there oh, and the flies and the I can re- see why his temper was so there's high. No, I mean, there's no way I wouldn't have been in the same boat done as the him same thing. Mm-hmm. and been just as angry, especially if I was as particular as it seemed like he was, because he was right. a very well-spoken man. He mm-hmm. he had a good vocabulary. And he, he would, had great experience at yeah. news stations. He was like yep. a writer and stuff for like different 
reports and yeah. Uh huh. You put anyone in Iowa with a hundred <laughs> degrees and ninety eight percent humidity and right and a million that's what flies. you're gonna get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you put if, them inside an RV that's if, not with AC on. Probably if you've not yelled "Get out of here, you fucking flies!" and thrown your arms <laughs> yep. wildly through the air and yelled at the unpaid intern like to get you care. things. Yeah, you just haven't lived. Yeah, you haven't. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I I know we've all been in those places where yeah. it would be very easy to do it and if our all of our outbursts were on video right you know it, we it would very, go viral too it very well could happen as far as being a well-made documentary i, I mean it's it's a few years old now so mm-hmm. it, it it dated itself quickly yes um but for a make it as you go kind of documentary i think it was made pretty well um right. especially it, when ben didn't know if he was going to even get a documentary out of it without Jack right, calling him first like right and it felt it felt pretty organic for the most mm-hmm. part even if it was somewhat planned out i I don't i i feel like it there it would have been difficult to do that unless it was organic right their friendship you know the kind of it's starting with ben's obsession with the videos to tracking him down with the you know the the struggle to find him those are all good story uh, elements to a right. story and then uh jack's unwillingness to play nice and then eventually coming back it's you know that little twist at the in the middle of the the movie kind of or the novel or whatever it may be right and then getting to the point where this old man uh who has felt lonely he finally feels some love and has gained a new friend and you know and at the end he's waving on his porch with little buddha next to his his leg and it felt like a natural conclusion that you want out of an actual movie and there was enough context there then like background research which we've been frustrated with before not getting any like background yeah i felt like it was executed so well for how minimal of a story that this could have been like right. this could have been 30 minutes of an episode of being like where is he now and yep. it was i felt like it was very well developed mm-hmm. for right. the amount of context that was yep. there yeah i like the end of it oh he's, so cute. Show the sweetness of him at the mm-hmm. end yep you know and he's way I, as a matter of fact i think he himself jack is the one that just told a story about himself yep you know? yeah and i think that the lack of history uh, like personal history from him being that it was his choice to not talk about those things that kind of it like molly was saying it that that sort of made up i think for some of the lack of context about who this guy is because all we needed to know about him was the videos the the winnebago videos so i was definitely happy for jack um you know he was able to accept that he was not just hated by everyone, didn't have to hate everyone back. Toward the end, though, it did leave me to wonder, after the film crew left and everything, like, did did he change his mind about seclusion? Was the reason that he was out there because he wasn't feeling loved and the reason he wanted to be a hermit was because he had this thing looming up, up above him that he thought was much bigger and worse than it was? You know, just, I mean, obviously we don't know the answer to this, but... What do you guys think? Do you think that once all that was done and now he's back out in the woods blind and with his dog? Is, I forgot is, that he's blind. Yeah. Oh. I think it's a switch on. I think the guy that he saved that was homeless and living in his basement, mm-hmm. Keith, yeah. Keith. Keith. Now Keith is well to do, well off. So now they can switch roles. Now I figure at the end of the video, this guy is not going to be walking around the woods too much longer. Yeah, they're, so he might go in with Keith. Keith might his be rope. his caretaker then, you know, which would be cool, you know. Yeah. So yeah, he yeah that was a interesting point that was brought up about him uh, having brought Keith in at one point from homelessness, and and that was sort of what started their you know their brotherhood, sort of. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I wish that. We knew kind of, does he still out in the woods? You know, obviously there's always a a desire to know what happens next. But I do think it was, it stopped at the right point. If it had gone much longer than that, it would have been like, okay, do we really care about what's happening now? Or is it just a curiosity type of thing? Yeah, I need a 2021, 2022 update about where Jack Rebney is right now. Yeah. I did Google it to see if he passed away. And he, I don't think has, because no, I, I couldn't find anything well. yep. about it. As far, as far as the the old internet says, he's still alive and well, and probably hating Walmart and getting. <laughs> I hope he found peace in the in the seclusion eventually, yeah. and 
his cabin in the woods turned from somewhere where he was hiding from hate into loving himself yeah. and being out there and kind of just being cool with whatever mm -hmm. his life took him from there. Cause he was already an old man. Like, it's not like he's going to get yeah. another Winnebago ad that he needed to film. So right. yeah. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe, maybe I, I don't think he went out there to hide away or anything. Um, I think he just wanted to be away from people and enjoy nature. Um, That's what I feel too. Yeah. I think he was just, uh, like you see him on camera and he's always putting on a performance, yeah. whether right. it's, whether it's that first video we see where yep. he's this nice old man or when he's on stage, just killing it. Yep. <laughs> but it was like more the one and one, one on one, um, conversations with his fans where I think we really got to see him. Yeah. Know, and I interact. think that's the part, the part that makes me wonder, and of course we're seeing this from the view of the Winnebago man, this, you know, this guy who is known as the angriest man in the world, you know, but the, the way he loved to perform, like you said, whether it was, you know, acting like he was calm or he was on stage, that doesn't strike me as the typical guy who wants seclusion. You know, that's, strikes me as someone who wants to be around people and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But to, to me, it seemed like, Oh, is this over now? You know, is this, is that what, you know, now, now that I've, I've learned that things are, are good. My hope is that he, he, I don't know, whatever, whatever makes me, Jack, if you're out there listening, we hope you're happy. We hope that you, uh, know that you've got you have a lot of fans out there i was you know just to go back a little bit to his fans they walked down the line and they were talking to everyone who was lined up around the block to see his his uh video and then and then meet him right um i had a little fear based on some of the people they were talking to that this was going to be a um sort of my fear for when we watched gray gardens as well <laughs> was the you know is this just a sideshow? Are they here to see the crate? Because right. the one guy was saying, I'm hoping to see a lot of angry outbursts and a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I'm going, man. Yeah, that guy was kind of an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> and he did turn it around a little. Just, mm. <laughs> I think I think he kind of corrected himself at the end. Yeah, I think he they showed him did. on the, in, where he said, you know, this, I'm glad that he's a, you know, he, he did a good job. He seems like a happy guy, you know, and he was well-spoken. So, but he gave just enough, you know, fire up on his performance that made it interesting and you're still you still know that this is the winnebago man right right um but that was my fear watching that was i the fact that people come out to see it's one thing if you go see a comedian their job is to get up there and be make a fool at. of themselves and mm -hmm. be laughed at right this guy didn't come here to be your court jester yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if he's getting laughed at, if they're, you know, sort of teasing him or, you know, having having fun at his expense, then that's fucked up. I and mean, we don't need that. And I, I would hope that they wouldn't, you know, that the, the showrunners wouldn't have done that because they seem to be starstruck when they met him. Yeah. The guys mm -hmm. who run the found footage fest, uh, festival. They're like, this is the best night of our lives yeah. <laughs> ever. This is true meeting a celebrity. I'm sure that made him feel pretty good. Right. And, and they presented him with a very heartfelt award. What was that, Bryce? It was a fly swatter. A fly swatter. <laughs> An official fly swatter. Yeah, he was also always him, on that. He yeah, was him really posing. Posing. Yeah, He was. He's he was proud of that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he's probably going to use it at his cabin. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, anything that wasn't talked about in this that you had wished was talked about, or do we think it, they did a pretty good job of encapsulating everything, or anything anything you want to touch on at all? Anyone? There, there is one thing I want to touch on. When he was on stage, they they let him in the building. You know, he was getting mm -hmm. ready to go on stage, and at some point, someone should have said, "Hey, let me hold your coat." But no, they just let him on stage and he was holding this coat and it was awkward. I was like, someone take his coat. He's on stage. But right. No, and he's he just can't, holding his coat the whole time. He can't it, see the coat racks. Yeah, it really bothered me. I don't really know why. But <laughs> yeah. That's one thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> it's kind of nice, Bryce. <laughs> yeah. You would have been the guy in, in the crowd that stood up and said, hey, Jack, let no, me I, hold your coat. I don't stand up in crowds. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> You know, for me, the only thing that, that maybe was 
a little misleading about this is one of the taglines is the funniest documentary ever made. And I think I may maybe mention this at the top of the show, but I definitely don't think it was. To me, this was more a a heartwarming or heartfelt documentary. Uh, the comedy came from the original videos and then his reaction to those in some, you know, you know on stage. Uh, that was the comedy. To me, this was more of a, a story of, I don't remember the guy's name. It's at the top of my notes and I'm not going to scroll up that far. But the guy who did the the review that said it's sort of a, a guy in the past meeting the modern day world of the internet and sort of those two worlds coming together and sort of, you know, forming a bond, forming a friendship, uh, which I thought was was pretty nice. I wish we would have gotten a little bit more context about Jack's life, honestly, even though, you know, he obviously wasn't forthcoming with that information. So it's to no fault of anyone, but it would have been so interesting to know what his life was like before he started writing and doing, you know, the news and commercials, Mm -hmm. um, because he seems like he had a really interesting life. Like Mm -hmm. even just being involved with news reporting in general, especially in the time that he was with like journalism, when he was explaining that it was like more cold, hard facts and that kind of thing. Like it would have just been interesting to see more about his, his career and life before his Winnebago man, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, (laughs) before his Winnebago commercial. James, anything, any stones left unturned? In the eyes of King James? <laughs> no. I kind of enjoyed there? the guy. <laughs> he kind of reminded me of my uh, my grandpa. Yeah. Because my, my grandpa used to just, that's all he used to do, just sit on the porch, drink his gin, <laughs> and just cuss you out. All the grandkids. It's like, what? Like, I got like 15 people in my family, like aunts and uncles. And then they all got kids, and we all eating together. And here come Grandpa walking across, the, walking across the uh, floor, cussing everybody out. My grandma saying, "Hey, Greg, stop that, Greg! I don't care, water bill, I don't care. Well, after these more the little all uh, uh, kind of things, bleep bleeps, bleep bleeps, bleep, 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 you know. But anyway, and then he would just go sit down and just lay his, uh, lay his head on the couch outside on the porch and fall asleep. What was your grandmother's name? Water bill. Such a cool name. Yeah. That's such a cool name. <laughs> what? Waterbell, Waterbell Wilson. Waterbell Wilson. Yep. All right. Finally, we've gotten to the part of our show where we need to do a official documentary rating where each crew member gives a rating from one to ten items with those items changing every week depending on the documentary we have watched. A score of one is an absolute piece of fly-covered garbage, and a score of ten means that it's on par with the best Winnebago RV that Jack Rebney was trying to sell. The item that we chose for this week is fucking flies. So Bryce, how many fucking flies are you rating the Winnebago man? Winnebago man comes in at six fucking flies. Six fucking flies. Malie. I'm going to go ahead and give Jack Rebney and his Winnebago's seven fucking flies. All right. James, how many effing flies? Six flies. <laughs> Six flies and no Fs to give. And I will give this seven fucking flies. Which means, after averaging everyone's scores together, the official documentary rating for Winnebago Man is six and a half fucking flies. That was fun. That was fun. Thanks, all you goddamn jackasses, you're all you accoutrema. Thanks, Tony and Thanks Tony. Thanks for doing me a kindness. Tony, 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 for hanging out with us and discussing this documentary. I hope the crew in this room knows that if I ever have to film in an, an industrial sales video in a hundred degree weather, surrounded by a million flies, I hope you're all there to enjoy it with me, so we can cuss at each other and and all that good stuff. Now. Let's talk about next week's episode. For next week, the crew will be making our way to an oil boom in North Dakota to discuss the 90-minute film from 2014 called The Overnighters. This film depicts the lives of people chasing the dream of high salaries in the North Dakota oil boom, only to discover that affordable housing is almost impossible to find, along with a whole bunch of other struggles in North Dakota. Has anyone here seen The Overnighters yet? 
Yes. Yeah. What would you think, James? I thought it was pretty interesting. It was pretty nice. Yeah. What do you guys think, Bryce and Molly? Are you any predictions about the overnighters? I'm I'm actually going to watch it, and uh, I predict that uh, it's about people staying out overnight. Wow, where'd yes. you come up with that? Um, That's prediction? intuitive. It's off the top of my head. Yeah, man. You, it's documentary almost... about sleepovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Pillow fights. Pillow fights. Yeah. You know, this is this this documentary, Overnighters, is one that I uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, you know, after watching the trailer, it is definitely one that I feel like there's going to be some some heartbreak. It did feel pretty pretty heavy uh it sort of reminds me of you know maybe an Oregon trail or a gold rush type thing where everyone's flooding to one part of the country because for the with the promise of of Fortune riches and, yeah. yeah and and just based on the trailer alone I know that it doesn't quite go according to plan um so we're in for some hardship next week I think I'm expecting to not feel super great after watching that one so everyone go out and check out the documentary the overnighters before we come back next week it can be streamed on Tubi, just like this one was um next week we're going to crawl into the back of our black creepy vans <laughs> we're gonna have our blankets and pillows and we're gonna try to make our way in the oil industry one documentary at a time if you want to connect to the documentary crew Look for at Documentary Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or you can shoot us an email at info.documentary at gmail.com. On behalf of DJ, Bryce, Molly, King James, and the entire Documentary family, I am your host, Jeff Kalaski, and I want to thank you all for listening. I hope you keep your minds open and be kind to each other. You believe any of that shit? Bye. <laughs> Get out of here, you fucking flies. <laughs> I don't want any more bull from anyone. That includes me. You believe any of that shit? Get out of here, you fucking flies.